now here we just uh, show you a way to animate a clock. Now let's just show you the final effects. As you can see, this why this uh, object represent the seconds is moving. Uh, this object is moving as well. Well, it looks so slightly. Let's yeah, show you this one. Okay, as you can see, it's reached one four forty frames. Um, this minute hand shows you one minute. Okay. Now let's just to show you how to set up this scene. First, you go to just going too fast. Go to window settings preferences and go down preferences. Okay. You get this window. Okay. Click on timeline and set this option playback speed to real time 24 frames per second okay now if you set to this one play every frame Maya is actually trying to uh, interpret each and every frame and use a full speed to interpret it and as you can see it definitely too fast don't look like a real clock, maybe something uh, different in another planet. Okay, so let's just go to the same place again and set to real time 24 frames per second. Right? Okay, now second, we <coughs> gonna select this object. Go to rotate Y and right mouse click it and click on expressions. Okay, open up expression editor. Now, the way we control these two objects is by creating expressions. This way is actually a simple uh, programming script. Uh, it's called a mail scripting in Maya. And uh, of course, expressions is also use mail scripting. Uh, why it's called expressions? Maybe it's just a uh, use simple ones. It's not a full program. But use mail, you can create a very comp uh, complicated scripts to control um, mo much more uh, complex effects and. Uh, in our case, we are going to use um, the value from the timeline to control the rotation around y axis. Okay, to uh, rotate this object, these two objects. Now, first we need to get the count seconds we are at at the moment. So we use a count frame divided by twenty-four. Now, why is 24? Because uh, the moment we use uh, 24 frames to represent one second. Uh, in uh, cinema, so you look at the film, it, it is 24 frames per second. Okay? And uh, of course, if you use uh, like 15 frames per second, like TV, uh, then you just use 15 to. Uh, replace uh, 24. Okay, and we get a count second. We use a count second times by 6. Okay, why 6? Six? 6 is 6 degrees, the rotation value. As you can see from this image, uh, from this object, uh, I've already divided this plane uh, into <coughs> 60 sections, like 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, from here to here represent one section. This is 6. Six degrees, okay. Six degrees and times by sixty uh, equals three hundred sixty degrees is a uh, whole circle, okay. Now, uh, let me just show you the big version in case it's too small. Uh, here's a script to control the seconds, right? They go to the second object, which is uh, represent the minute. Same thing, rotate Y, right mouse click it and click on expressions. Okay, here's the script. Okay, show the large version. Now, the only difference here is that we change the name of the 
you know the variables yeah just from second to minute okay and we divided by 1440 because uh, one minute will be equal to 60 seconds and one second to use 24 frames so 24 frames times by 60 so 1440 uh, frames represent one minute that's why we use this value here okay and after we get this value, we put in here times by six degrees, we get a rotation value. All right? Easy to understand. All right. Now here we're gonna explain why we use negative. It really depends on your orientation of the object. Uh, in my case, I need to use uh, <coughs> negative value. Now, if I use the positive value here, okay, and uh, also go to the second value uh, and change to positive. You can see the effects. Okay, rewind play. It's actually moving, uh, rotating counterclockwise. Okay, that's uh, something be aware. Of. Yeah, of course, if you after this kind of effects, you can use uh, positive value. Otherwise, you just use the negative value. Again, uh, it really depends on the orientation of your objects. Okay, um, that's actually about it. And uh, I want to thank Mr. Ken. Um, he sent me a question about how to, um, like, uh, asking the way to control two objects to represent a clock. Um, <coughs> Obviously, he's using a keyframes to control these objects, and uh, that's a kind of tedious way to do to do that. Um, so yeah, here's a way for solving this problem. Of course, um, if you have better solutions, you're more than welcome to post it on Sky Media's blog and share with other members. And uh, thanks for watching.